Welcome to my channel. This is part two of the uh, training series on flying. And uh, yeah, we've got a little bit of uh, feedback uh, from our VIP customer. He said in the first lesson, we talked too much, but uh, we did not fly. So we promised our uh, VIP customer that uh, today we will have another session and we will do our uh, first flight in this, in this training. So if you are happy, please uh, shake your hands. Oh yeah, great, thank you very much. We are glad that you are uh, satisfied. So in this lesson, uh, we will continue. Uh, uh, last time uh, we spoke about the uh, parts of the aircraft that is, are used to control the flying. And now we speak about the smaller parts that can help us fly the aircraft straight level. All right. Now, the first one is uh, this part in here. So as you can see, if I zoom. OK, so OK, now down. So you see this small part. So this elevation moves the entire wing. And this is what will make this, this aircraft very much uh, in high control because there are uh, less aircrafts that the entire wing move uh, as uh, for elevation. So this is why this aircraft is very, it can give, uh, why it's used for training, because it can give very high control for the pilot uh, in relative to other type of aircrafts. Now you see this one in here, the small one. Uh, inside the aircraft, if you come in here, Okay, you see this is something called the elevation trim and we can move it. So while the aircraft is flying, the pilot can move it down and up. So if we move it completely down and this is like nose down, what we are doing is we are trimming the aircraft down. And this, if we go out now to see what happened, we notice, oh, this is small part now, it moved up, which means we can move the nose down. Mm. So this is good. Why? Because when we are flying, if we monitor like the aircraft at a certain engine power level, it's always going up and we don't want to gain additional altitude, we can trim it so that it can fly straight. And of course, as you can imagine, when we are taking off, we have to put it in the center. Now, as you can imagine, uh, we will talk about this later on. This is not a handbrake, by the way. But this is uh, for the flaps. So, okay. so it's important, as you can imagine, for this to be on the neutral position. And then once we take off, we can uh, use the uh, elevation trim, which is this, to trim the aircraft so that it can fly straight. Good. So this is number one. The second concept in here we want to talk about is this. So as you can imagine, this wing has a certain area. And once we do that, we can create an additional lift. And what is the name of this? Maybe most of you are familiar with this from other aircrafts. This is called the flaps. And we can set them to be on this level, which is maximum down. This is flap level two, flap level one, and flaps are completely up. Now, when do we need extra flaps? We will use the flaps throughout most courses most videos uh, we increase a little bit the flaps which is to level one at takeoff and landing to simply give you a very quick answer the flaps will help increase the drag this means when we are coming to land we can have uh, the aircraft lower its speed and we can have the aircraft uh, generate more lift up uh, at a lower speed and the third advantage is amazing, and this is where we are coming to land. We can have the aircraft point its nose slightly down more so that we can see the airport better without uh, the need to put, uh, without the need to point the nose, uh, uh, point the nose up, which means like if you are coming to land, right? And we cannot see the airport so well because we, our sliding angle is a three degrees, right? and we need to see better the airport 
So what can what we can do by lowering the uh, the uh, the, uh, the flaps one level down, uh, the angle of the aircraft now will go. It can point more down, but without increasing the uh, the uh, the, the, without the increasing the down speed. So this can help us conclusion is see better the airport while landing. This is why we can land without the uh, without those, uh, you know, uh, but uh, if we lower the flaps, it can help us improve the visual element of the airport. Great. So, okay, Mr. Uh, customer, I assume now you are happy. He is saying now he's waiting for us to start the aircraft and uh, fly so what we will do now we will show you those what we talked about in video one and video two while flying great so and in future videos i will focus on all the instruments you see in here in front of us but for the time being i will just focus on yeah yes yeah, so because he doesn't want us to speak too much now he wants us now to start uh, the aircraft and fly and he said explain those uh, when uh, flying a little bit. I will not explain those, but I will explain, as I, as I mentioned, the concepts that are related to flight control in terms of rudder, yaw, etc. So I'll show you those concepts. Good. Gradually, every time I use something, I will maybe refer to it uh, later on. Great, now let's turn on, the, let's, let's turn on the aircraft and start the engine. So I will just remove this one, no problem. Now to start this aircraft, it's quite simple. This is the valve that opens uh, the fuel to the uh, fuel pump and it's already on. So I can select uh, two fuel containers. So there's one to the, in the left wing. You can see this hole. We can, they put here uh, gas and there is one to the right. Now we can decide uh, in this air type of aircraft, you cannot do automatic. So you can select either the left or the right. Now, how much gas do we have? We can check it in here inside the aircraft. So we have it full. No need. Uh, let's put it, let's fly light. We can put uh, 40% uh, of the container. Normally, you don't fly at low fuel level, you know. So, and I'm selecting now, let's select the left one. And now, let me make sure that the handbrake is on. It's already. And this is, we turn on the main power from the battery. And this will turn on the alternator, I guess. And this will turn on the fuel pump. And once we turn on the fuel pump, let me turn it off first. Uh, because we have now, we open the uh, fuel supply, uh, we can turn on the fuel pump because the engine is off and there will be no uh, mechanical bump, pump being able to pump fuel inside the engine. But uh, this will, sub will decide how much of fuel we need to supply to the engine, so we need to put it to the maximum and then turn on the fuel pump. And you see here we have a fuel pressure. And now the engine is, 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 is ready to take off. But we fail, before we turn on the engine, we make sure we turn on the, uh, this one. Uh, and if you go out, uh, you see here there is a light that tells that the aircraft is in, will be in motion. So this is like the warning. So we can turn it on from here. Yeah, this is the radar on off. And this is for the instruments. And this is for the landing. I don't know what happened. All right, and this is the uh, anti-collision light. We turn it off also. And the, the pitot heat, it's not it's lightly cold in here. Uh, this is in fact to, to, to warm up the instrument that measures the elevation, okay? So we turn them all on, no problem. And now let's just turn on the engine. Uh, we are bra. Now we are supposed to look outside. There is no one near the airport. And ready. 
put the throttle on 10% and then the engine is on okay so now you can monitor uh, so the fuel pump normally we keep it during takeoff at the cruise level we turn it off but now we will just go quickly in a trip and then this the oil pressure is okay so there is oil inside the engine and the fuel pressure is good and of course the temperature of the oil is still low because we just turned on the engine good all right so this is the alternator supplying uh, if we turn it off we can see now we turned off the electrical generator so now we are consuming the battery and we will have this warning light that the alternator is not working <laughs> so if you are flying and we get this uh, error this means the generator of electricity is not working and we need to land immediately before we run out of the battery oh, great one thing here to say this is we have two magnetos the magnetos are the electrical uh, circuit that generates power for the spark plugs and we have two sets right and left here we are booting both of them and there is a mechanism we will do this in the future on how we test if any one of them is not working all right because if we are you saying use both of them if one is not working we don't know which one so there is a mechanism to test we will do this in the future videos so now uh, let's take off and show you how we control the aircraft good you can see where we are now at in, in, inside the airport on the map and we need if you see on the on the map We need to uh, leave this way. Let's take off from this runway. If we zoom, we need to uh, come this way, this way, this way. <laughs> so it's a long way, a little bit, to take off on the runway. And this is the beauty of uh, flying. Uh, so during this taxi on the runway, I will explain a little bit how we read the, uh, the signs on the, inside the airport. Okay, I will leave this map in here so that you can see uh, where we are. Good. Release the handbrake. So normally you go, uh, there are guiding lights. They give you the green. So, yeah, I don't want to, now we need to go straight. Yeah, so this is early morning, by the way, in San Francisco. Because the, our customer uh, likes to... to walk up early and have to meet the expectations of the customer. And flying early morning is also nice because uh, the weather will be nice, uh, colder relatively. And also the view is nice. Okay, now we need to go left. We reduce the speed. So there are a lot of regulations on the maximum speed uh, aircrafts when they when they move on the ground that while taxiing. And if an aircraft is coming on our way, there are rules that uh, which aircraft goes to the right, which aircrafts goes to the, the, the facing one comes to the left, so how they can cross. Yeah. 
now straight till the end and then uh, the runway 30 will be to our right. Runway will be to our right. Not the first right, the second one, which is this one. And this is now the runway. Now Why do you normally, you, you must stop here because I will show you this from outside. You can see this line in here. There are two continuous lines from this side, which means any aircraft coming this way must stop and request permission from ATC before crossing to the runway. But if an aircraft is coming this way for any reason, because they have landed and they came here, they took the entire runway to come out, uh, then they can enter without the permission. Assume now we contacted the uh, ATC and they said, yes, feel free. We talk in, in the future also about checklists. Normally, the, we do a specific checklist. Checklist is a keyword in the aviation industry. Everything is based on a checklist. You check things, and, and why checklists are key? Because uh, pilots don't forget once they go over the checklist. For our case here, our uh, client said uh, he needs more romantic uh, you know, mood, so we turn on this ambient light inside the aircraft which will give it a warm feeling and now let's take off so we check so many things as a checklist before we take off like the pressure one more time etc assume we have everything is good Now one thing here, uh, we can cover this also in the future. You see, I'm saying we'll cover a lot because I'm just sharing with you that we will have so many things to talk about in the future. Is when we are taking off, uh, there is a tendency that the aircraft will drift to the left. And this is why we counter it with the uh, right rudder to stay aligned on the runway. But I was uh, playing with the camera, so uh, I was uh, slightly drifting left and right. Now we are climbing uh, with a constant uh, vertical speed of around uh, 700 feet per minute. And normally recommended, this is our first flight, uh, yeah, Mr. Customer, uh, is to climb a minimum of 500 feet before doing anything because this will be a safety margin and then also if if can be continue to climb till 1000 feet and then do some adjustments which is after takeoff so now we're still climbing and then after where we come to 1000 feet We can start to level the aircraft because we in this aircraft in this flight we will fly nearly 1,000, 1,000 plus. So now what I did, I I removed my hand from the front, from the joystick, and the aircraft now is I'm not doing anything. 
is continuing to, to you notice here, is to go more on the vertical speed. So the first thing I will do, okay, as you can see, the RPM, the engine is too high. I will lower the, I will lower the power because the cruising power in this type of aircraft. So and I will correct a little bit the, the direction indicator. So I will continue to fly 30 degrees, which is the because here there is some wind pushing me to the right. So you notice now I lowered only the power and basically I stopped gaining, gaining altitude. And this is what's very important. Power is key. So we did not talk about power. But you remember we mentioned this when we were saying about the generation of the vertical lift. And then we use, so I will enable this so that you can see what I'm doing. So, and if I push it slightly higher, you notice I gain more speed. If I push it lower, and this is from behind the aircraft, you can see what's happening. And this is the rudder trim, left, right. And the flaps are still one level up. But what I will do, because you remember, if I change the flaps now, the entire model of flying straight will change. I will take the flaps up, I did, and notice now the aircraft started to point down. So how do we counter it? Either by increasing the power, but I don't want to do that. Okay. But it seems it's, it's okay, it's still level now. So normally you need to counter you can do those a little bit of up, down, etc. until you stabilize it. And if you see a more trend towards going up, and here where we use the trimmer, you remember we talked about. So you see here this one here, we can trim down, up. So we can do this to make sure the aircraft is, move, is, is just going straight. So welcome to San Francisco here, very beautiful area. I've been here many times. So you notice now we are still going slightly up. What we can do is trim down a little bit if we want to stabilize our... Not recommended to use the trimmer to gain altitude or to lose altitude. Keep the aircraft moving straight level. And if you want to increase altitude, then it's a project. We will talk about it in the future videos. Because if you gain the habit of going altitude through the trimmer then you will be finding it hard to generate a stable flight if you see on the map now we we flew on the other side of the uh, San Francisco uh, Bay and we are still, our altitude is like 1,400. And if you look here to the left, this is our airport. Shall we go back and land our client? Because I think this is good for our first uh, trip. Yeah, he's saying this is fine. And let's see the aircraft from outside. So as you can see, this is now left, how we go left. You see how the ailerons are changing, going right, going left. We normally don't do this sharp uh, angles. And now let's prepare to land. Amazing landing always depends on the approach. So we need to reduce power to bring our speed and now you notice once I reduce power, I'm dropping a lot my uh, elevation. So I put the flaps on one and this will create a drag. It will lift the aircraft. And now I don't touch the uh, 
flaps and I try to stabilize an angle of descent. But how far I'm still away from the airport, so I will not descend to less than 1,000 feet for the time being. And it will be our, our first uh, landing. And of course, I need to go a lot to the left. to align with the runway and I will trim the aircraft slightly up now if need be I can put more power now but I will not do this because my speed is still fine I'm still in control you know but I don't want to descend too much the biggest mistake happens in landing is you descend too much and then uh, it becomes hard to control the aircraft while landing so this is why uh, if you come to the airport with higher speed and altitude, you can miss the, the landing, no problem, and have, a, uh, and, and have a, 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 what you call the missed approach and fly around the airport. Now, which airport is this? Who can guess? This is not our airport. <laughs> we are flying to what we can see is which airport? This is San Francisco. <laughs> Shall we go and land in San Francisco? Because our airport is to our left. If we see here, our airport is there. But let's land in... Yeah, our client is saying no problem. You can land in uh, San Francisco International Airport. There is a technology in every airport. You notice now I'm not using technology for landing, it's manual. But of course I'm monitoring using my equipment for elevation, etc. You notice uh, there are lights. I will, when we come slightly closer, we will, uh, we will talk about them. And let's mention this now. Let's put pause. And zoom. Uh -huh. You see this runway? It has four lights. And these are four lights for this runway, but we can see both. Those lights have an angle that is really interesting. When we are coming to land, if we are coming with the right angle, with the light gliding slope, we will see two white, two red. Okay? If we are too high, we will see three white. If we are more very high, we will see them all white. But if we are too low, we can imagine that we will see three red or all red. So if we can descend now with the right gliding slope, we should keep seeing two white, two red during our perfect gliding slope. So now we are at the right height, but we need to continue to descend as we mentioned. Good, let's continue. And now we need to start to, you notice they became three white. So let's descend. How do we descend? We, I remove, I reduce slightly the power because we are still 80 knots, which is perfect speed. And you notice now how many white? All of them white. What does it mean? We are too high. And we need to go slightly left to align better with the runway. and slightly higher, better than lower. I'm trying to descend. Slightly 
faster. Ah, we got one red, which is good. So let's shoot for the yeah, second red, good. But we don't want the three red, huh? we want only two red. Ah, three red, no. Let's, let's stop descending or reduce our descent. 3-1 is always fine, but 4 now, like you notice now, it, it is not easy, by the way. Uh, because it's hard to have a, a perfect landing. This is called a flare, we cut completely the power. And this is when I was saying that this aircraft, the PA-28, is it's very realistic because it's not forgiving like you need to have a very good uh, descent okay so our client will come back uh, to uh, I think he's mentioned he's gonna have his private jet now take him back home so this is fine Okay, so we will go park the aircraft and by this uh, we conclude the part two of our training and in part three we should focus on the aircraft. You can see now because I'm leaving the runway the continuous lines are from the other side so I can cross without talking to uh, ATC. This, aircraft, this airport is well, well simulated in full details inside Microsoft Flight Simulator. We will uh, park in here. Yeah, we, we, we have all the facilities under our... Uh, <laughs> ...disposal to enjoy. <laughs> we own them all in the simulator. Yeah. He's saying uh, go there, no problem. Here, uh, that's fine. Great, so parking brake, turn off the engine, turn off the lights, the battery. Great, thank you. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the flight. We flew this very small flight using the window open. You can not do that if you are above 2,000 feet. 1,000 feet is okay. Uh, if you are very high, then you will get a lot of turbulence. Okay, so next time we should remember to keep it closed. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> thanks for watching and uh, stay safe. Uh, if you are enjoying those videos, you are learning something, hopefully. Uh, please uh, subscribe and uh, click like and share those videos with your friends because this is a new channel and uh, I'm looking uh, you know, very well to uh, grow the number of uh, subscribers. Uh, thank you very much for hosting again and bye-bye. Uh,